put this old grass up sopper on here so I don't have to take my ground all the way to the other end of the pipe. No, it's not the only way to ground to pipe, but it is a very handy way to ground to pipe. I first heard about a grasshopper. Why they call it a grasshopper, I'm not sure. It's a slang term for this thing right here. Maybe because it looks like a grasshopper sitting on top of the pipe. I don't know. I learned about a grasshopper from my years of pipeline experience. We use them on pipeline work to make sure the arc stays inside the weld zone. As you can see, we've got some hose back here insulating it from the pipe. That way the arc doesn't try to arc back here on the pipe. You can find your very own grasshopper in the Aros Welding store, aroswelding.com. And I'm excited to share with you the latest grasshopper that we now offer in the Aros Welding store. It's a little baby guy made for baby pipe. Super handy for those of you that weld on a bunch of flow lines and whatnot. Three, four inch pipe that even work on two inch pipe. This right here is three inch pipe. Both of these are collapsible. In other words, you can take this bolt out back here and the legs come off and it's just more tidy to carry around in a toolbox like so. These little circular slots right here are for the common T300 stinger that a bunch of pipeline welders like myself use as grounds. You got a slot there for your welding lead, slip your 300 in, clamp it on the grasshopper like so. But as you just seen, the grasshopper still works with a traditional ground like I'm using in this video. All right, let's do some fitting and a welding. All right, so for the end of our top horizontal piece, they're going to be 45. I've already 45 to one end. And rather than holding the plate up against the uh, entrance itself or that piece itself, I just took the piece I cut off, put it on a piece of plate, and then I'm just going to trace it with this soapstone. Already marked this one out. So I'll have two plates total. Cut them out, clean them up, and uh, go cut that other 45 on the other end of the top horizontal and then weld these two plates on. Getting all this moisture out is a huge, huge key to making a more enjoyable cut. Only reason it's taken this long is because it's cooler outside today. The cooler it is, the more moisture there is versus like a 100 degree day, you know. Pizza, pizza. I'm just fixing to grind these clean them up, and then we'll pull this welding car over yonder, cut that top piece away from the uprights, lay out that other 45, 
cap them, sand them down, and then that thing will be good to go, and we'll be ready to start on gates. Went ahead and fired up my old weld machine, let her warm up, and my pickup, let it warm up. Check this out. Little uh, modification. I welded me in a piece of square tubing right here and down to keep this rod bucket from moving forward into my cab. And I put another one over here just to keep it from laying into my weld machine. All right, so I've got one end cut off. So whenever I cut these apart, this I started here and we'll do it down there so you can watch in real time. I cut my bottom tack first and then I cut this one. And there's only these three tacks, one, two, three. So I cut the bottom one and whenever I was in the middle of cutting this one, this one cracked and broke. And then I went over there and did the same thing and I cut all my bottom tacks first just in case something happens whenever the last weld is being cut, I'm on top. Safety reasons, more or less. So I cut these two bottom tacks and then I cut this one and then this one. Well, whenever I cut the very last one of this one, which I think was this actual tack right here, that's whenever the whole thing goes moved away from this main upright right here. So some of it I'm sure is because of the cold weather, but another reason is probably just because of this thing setting here and getting rain over the past couple of weeks. And we actually just got some last night. Everything kind of settles. So there was probably some pressure there also. So whenever it finally got cut loose, it relaxed. So anyway, it's pretty interesting and something to be aware of. You know, if you're building your own entrance or anything with metal, just be aware of when you're cutting stuff apart, especially big stuff like this, just uh, be aware and be careful. All right, so let's see what this side is going to do. It's going to do the same thing. Starting with the bottom tack, going to preheat it real good. So I got halfway through that tack and the other half broke. Check this out. Look at that. How crazy. All right, let's continue to cut. Same thing happened there, except for I got about three quarters of the way through the tack and only about a quarter inch, quarter inch of it broke. All right, so these are my last two tacks. This one and this one here. I think I'm gonna cut this one first. jumped away from it also. Just plum crazy, plum crazy. 
All right, now I'll set these down. Take a grinder to all these tacks, clean it all up. That way it don't cut nobody whenever they're loading and unloading. And then uh, go ahead and lay out a 45 on the other end on this piece here. All right, so I've got one end set down. I wanted to point out though, for those of you that may not be aware of how careful I'm trying to be. Over the years I've learned about these jack stands and anytime I'm doing something like this or pulling material uh, down a jack stand, I always try to put a leg out towards the way that the uh, act as a gusset, you see? Because whenever I let this down, that's creating a lot of weight. And if this jack stand was turned like uh, where this right here, this opening was right here, the jack stand would have most likely collapsed. I just wanted to point that out because I think that's useful information when handling pipe on your own. Also, getting a buddy's a good idea too. But yeah, I just like to point out uh, safety things because I think it's a big deal. It don't take but a moment to get crushed by this stuff. So if you do build yourself a gin pole when you're working by yourself, just be real careful. Pay close attention, move slow. You know, watch your, watch the jack stand. That's what I do when I'm over there running that come along. I keep an eye on my jack stand feet and if it ever starts tipping or anything, I stop or just get out of the way. If you notice, I try not to stand in between my truck and the pipe. I try to stand, you know, where I'm not gonna be, not gonna be trapped, so. All right, moving right along. Put this old grass op sopper on here so I don't have to take my ground all the way to the other end of the pipe. Of the pipe. In this particular situation, I could have got by with welding this first cap on by taking my ground to the other end, like I just mentioned. But once I get that other cap on, I won't have any other choice but to use the grasshopper or do what I used to do before I knew about a grasshopper and take my ground and clamp it to a random piece of metal and tack that piece of metal to the pipe and then grind the uh, weld off after you're done.
you have it. Both ends are capped off. And there's our entrance. The only reason I got it stacked up like that is in case it rains, water don't run down into these pieces. Thanks for being here. I hope you have an awesome weekend. If you have any questions about any of the products on our website, arosswelding.com, you can text me or Kayla at 405-643-7176. Like I said, have an awesome weekend. And remember, learn something every day.